Well, hello again, and welcome back to the Straight A Nursing Podcast. I am Nurse Mo. I'm really happy that you're here with me today for episode 223. This is another one of our mini sewed bonus episodes. And in this one, I'm going to be talking you through the ultimate new nursing student checklist. Now, before you panic, I do have this in downloadable format at straightanursingstudent.com forward slash checklist. So don't feel like you got to take notes or do anything, especially if you're driving or walking near a deep drop off like by the lake. Okay. So you can definitely get that download, but I do want to talk you through all the things that I think a new nursing student should do to prepare for nursing school success. So before we dive into that, I want to take a quick minute for the listener shout out. And this one goes out to Marietta, who says, I just need to take a second and give Nurse Mo some huge thank yous. So my program really did not teach us med math whatsoever. I'm good at math, and so I wasn't too worried, but I did panic the first time I looked at a more complex problem. Using Nurse Mo's Crucial Concepts Bootcamp with her way of teaching dosage calc saved me. I was able to tutor fellow classmates toward the beginning of class, but since then, we haven't seen each other in person, and everyone kind of forgot we had a med math test every semester, so panic ensued two weeks before the test. Well, we took it, and only six people passed, and I got the only perfect score. So a huge thank you, Nurse Mo. Marietta, thank you so much for taking the time to write and share that. I love that you had such confidence going into your dosage calc exam, even if there was a brief moment of panic. The method that I teach will save you every single time. So Marietta is talking about Crucial Concepts Bootcamp, which is my nursing school prep course that happens to be on sale right now. Link in the episode notes. Okay, so let's talk about the ultimate new nursing student checklist. So this checklist, which again, I will link to in the episode notes, straightanursingstudent.com forward slash checklist. So you don't have to take notes right now. This checklist is designed to help you feel more confident and ready for nursing school so that when you walk into your very first day, you're feeling pretty darn good. So the thing about nursing school is that the schedule is really busy. And once it starts, there's no time for any extra stuff or of any kind, absolutely at all. So if you can get even a little bit ahead, get some things set up, ahead of time, some systems in place, all of that, it will pay off. So I don't want you to feel like you have to do everything on this list, but the more you do, the more prepared you will feel. So in this very first section, it's all about your nursing library and your nursing references. So your school may give you a list of things that they want you to have on hand as your, you know, obviously your textbooks. But if there's no additional resources, here are some that you may consider. A drug guide. If you have the option to utilize an actual book, or an online version. I really, really like the online version of Davis Drug Guide. It just makes it so easy to type in the med that you're looking for, search for the information that you need. It's really, really fast. So a drug guide is going to be absolutely critical. A lab reference guide is going to do so much more for you than just tell you the normal reference ranges for your lab values. It will explain the clinical significance if it's too high or too low and give a list of conditions and medications that can cause levels to be out of balance. So my recommendation for this is Mosby's Diagnostic and Laboratory Test reference. I still use that book to this day, and I graduated from nursing school a little while ago. Okay, next in your nursing library is an NCLEX prep book. Get a prep book with practice questions that are organized by body system so that as you're learning respiratory, you can do respiratory questions. As you're learning neuro, you can do neuro questions. My recommendation is the Saunders NCLEX prep book. It is golden. A care plan book. If your school is utilizing traditional care planning, 
it can be a little bit tricky to learn how to do this. So having a care plan book where you've got your nursing diagnosis and then your nursing interventions for various disease conditions can make that process so much faster. My recommendation for this is Nursing Care Plans by authors Gulanik and Myers. And then, of course, I would always recommend my Nursing School Thrive Guide. I wrote the Thrive Guide as a way to help students prepare for nursing school, and you can get that on Amazon, Nursing School Thrive Guide. Okay, so you've got your nursing library started. Maybe one more book I would add to that if it's not a required book for your class is Lippincott's Manual of Nursing Practice. This is basically your go-to reference for just about everything. Okay, in the next category, we have clinical supplies. Now, some programs may provide you with a list of things to get for clinical or a clinical kit, but others may leave you to fend on your own. So if you're not sure what to get or what you might need, here's a list. Definitely, you want comfortable shoes. Now, most schools are going to require that you get all white or all black, probably something with no mesh, no fabric. It'll basically be something you can easily wipe clean. Now, they could have other requirements, so always double check before purchasing, especially if you're dropping a big chunk of change on some shoes. Now, I don't have a specific recommendation for shoes because schools have so many different requirements. Shoes fit people so differently. I would suggest you get the most comfortable you can for the best price that you can, okay? You don't really need to spend $200 on a pair of shoes, but get something that you can wear for 8, 10, and 12 hours, depending on how long your clinical days are. For me, I wore a pair of New Balance sneakers. I think they cost about 60 bucks. They were super comfortable. So that's what I did and probably would still do today if I had to wear an all-white pair of shoes, because guess what? They're not super attractive, and I think I got rid of them as soon as I graduated. The next item that you could use for clinical that will make your feet and your legs very happy are compression socks. The best compression socks are going to have graduated compression to facilitate the most blood flow, reduce fatigue, and reduce swelling. I am a huge fan of the Sockwells brand, and you can get those on Amazon. Now, they're not cheap, but I will tell you, they will last for years. I have had a pair of my Sockwells for about eight or nine years, and they are still going strong. So get two pair and just rotate them, and you'll be good to go. You also want utility scissors and hemostats. Aside from your stethoscope, these two tools will be used far more than anything else. I like the ones from Prestige Medical. They're priced really really well, and you can even get some fun designs on the scissors so that they might not get lost so easily. A storage clipboard. You really want to have a secure place for your clinical paperwork and protect patient privacy. So having a clipboard where you can put paperwork inside and then close it is really, really helpful. Plus, it keeps things super organized. Bonus if it has a spot for your pens as well. There's one I really like available. I believe it's available on Amazon. It's the OIC Slim Clipboard. A watch is another clinical must-have. The ideal watch is going to have a sweeping second hand versus a watch that jumps at each second. If it's jumping at each second, it's really easy to count with the jump and not actually count with the heart rate or something that you're actually trying to measure. Now, note that your school may have um, a rule against smartwatches. So you may have to use just a basic analog watch with a sweeping second hand. You don't have to spend a lot on these. You can probably find one for under $30. 
And then the last thing that you will want for clinical is a clinical bag. So a bag or a backpack to carry your clinical supplies and your paperwork. So get the smallest size bag that suits your needs as space on the nursing units can be very limited. If you have a locker, it's probably going to be really, really small. I really love the LA Packmore water repellent nylon shoulder bag available on Amazon, which I link to in the downloadable nursing student checklist. Now, of course, your school is going to tell you to get a stethoscope, to get maybe a blood pressure cuff and all of those. I'm assuming they're already telling you that. These are the things that they might not mention that do come in really, really handy. Okay, the next thing are your school supplies, stocking up on your school supplies. So the first thing I'm going to tell you that you absolutely need is some kind of planner. Some students can get by and use a digital system like Google Calendar. If that's you, more power to you. I need to write things down. I need to be able to make lists and all of that. So I make planners for nursing students specifically. I will link to that in the episode notes. Um, it's a 12-month planner. It has monthly and weekly views, lots of space for list. Now, the key with the planner is get the one that you use. That's the planner that's going to help you keep your schedule straight, but have some kind of system in place before classes start. Next, you're going to need binders. Unless you're fully committed to going fully digital, which I know some people are great at and I admire you so very much, but if you're not, if you're using paper, you will need a system for organizing your paperwork and you want it to be sturdy because it's going to get used a lot. So I love the Better Binder from Staples. Not only does it come in some great colors, but they're really, really durable. And then binder divider tabs will give you a way to organize all the paperwork inside your binders. Get the ones with pockets just so that you have a place to stash extra things. And then page flags, page tabs. I love these for tabbing my book, tabbing my notes for information that I want to reference quickly. Pens. Okay, I know. You probably just got a rush of dopamine when I said pens because nursing students and nurses have a thing for pens, right? So choose a pen that's really comfortable to write with that flows really well. You don't want to have to push really hard or grip very tightly because you want to reduce hand fatigue as much as possible. Find the one you love and then buy it in bulk and put your name on them, okay? I am currently loving um, the Sharpie gel pens. I'm currently loving Tool, T-U-L, fine point pens for using in the hospital when I have to write really small. Um, my report sheets, those are probably my two favorites right now. I know a lot of students swear by the friction erasable pens, especially for their planners. Do note, though, that if you leave your planner in the car and it's warm out, that heat will make your ink disappear on those friction pens. So just be aware of that. Okay, highlighters, that goes right along with pens. You want to get multicolored highlighters, so don't just get a pack of yellow. Get a multicolored pack, and then develop a system for using different colors for different types of information, like everything pharmacology is, you know, green. Everything nursing interventions is orange. Everything signs and symptoms is blue, whatever, whatever. Have a system and stick to it. That's going to help your brain with recall and with that consistency. Your brain loves consistency. I like to have a little pack of mini office supplies with me at school or did. I'm not in school anymore. So having a few essentials on hand, you know, helps ensure that you have what you need when you need it and there's no delays because anytime you can save time, even if it's two minutes, you are saving precious, precious time that could be spent on something else. So the things that I would like to have on hand are a little staple remover, use that more than I can count, a little mini stapler and a little mini three-hole punch. Used the heck out of those things in nursing school. Also, um, page, uh, little binders. Uh, binder clips. I was trying to think like, what are those called? Binder clips in various sizes and paper clips come in really handy as well. 
Another great school supply to have is a book stand. If you're reading a lot, you know, you're looking down a lot, that's really hard on your neck. So putting your books up on a book stand can be just a, just an ergonomic sa- savior for your neck. There's one that I really love on Amazon. I will. It's linked in that checklist guide, and I still use it to this day. I absolutely love it. A lunch bag is going to be really helpful. This would also apply to your clinical supplies as well. Getting an insulated lunch bag means, you know, you don't have to find storage space, fridge space for your lunch. Um, You're going to make healthier choices, hopefully, if you have something with you that you can eat rather than relying on, you know, cheap fast food. My recommendation is the Locust Insulated Lunch Bag. Absolutely love it. It's got pockets on the outside, so I've got you know, a little spade. I take it to work now. So I've got a zipper on the front where my badge goes because I'm not going to work without my lunch bag. So I know my badge is in there. On the side, I've got spare pens. I've got a spare contact lens case. I've got my stevia so that I can make my coffee. I've got my AirPods so that I can listen to a podcast while I'm on my lunch break. So I've just got a few essentials. I've got some reading glasses in there. I've got backup glasses in there. I've got everything that I might need for a day at work in my lunch bag. And then if you're back and forth to school and taking a lot of stuff with you, a rolling bag is a really good idea. I want you to save your back as much as you can because nurses are hard on their backs. The job is hard. So save your back so that it stays strong and healthy for your career. Don't waste your back health on carrying a backpack. A rolling bag is just makes it really easy to carry what you need. I called mine my mobile office because it really did have everything I needed in it. My laptop, my chargers, all those little mini office supplies, snacks, change for the vending machine like that bag got me through nursing school and I absolutely loved it. The Amazon Basics rolling laptop case is what I link to in the student uh, nursing new nursing student checklist. So check that out. It's really functional, really sturdy. I think that you'll really like it. So tell me if we have this in common. You're way more comfortable with new experiences if you know a bit about what to expect in advance. So if you're like me, you check out restaurant menus online before you even think about arriving in person. Maybe you read the Amazon reviews for even the most mundane and everyday purchases. At this point, I think I'm an expert on just about every type of pen one could ever possibly use. And then maybe you make Pinterest boards for even the most everyday excursions, even the ones in your own town. If you're saying yes, I knew it. I totally knew we were BFFs. So if you're heading into nursing school, I know you have a lot of questions because I did too. And that's why I created my nursing school prep course, Crucial Concepts Bootcamp. In this self-paced online program, I take you through how to talk think, act, and learn like a nurse, plus so much more. You'll learn dosage calculations, organizational tips, how to take notes, how to tackle NCLEX-style exams, and even get a brief review of key A&P topics. Plus, there's a lot more where that came from. And the good news is, right now, Crucial Concepts Bootcamp is on sale. So head to the link in the episode notes, and I will see you there. Okay, the next category for your new nursing student checklist are apps and online tools. So you can boost productivity with apps and online tools, most of which are free that I recommend. So one is a Pomodoro timer. So you can set goals for like focus sessions that also work in scheduled breaks. So if you're not familiar with the Pomodoro technique, it sets timers And I believe you can customize the length of these focus sessions, but let's say it's 40 minutes and then a 10-minute or a 5-minute break and then another 40-minute focus session and then a 5-minute break. And then you do, I think, like four of these focus sessions and then you get a longer break and it has been proven to boost productivity and focus. So Pomodoro timers, there's one called Focus Keeper. That's for Apple and one called Clockwork Tomato for Android. So those are both free, I believe. 
Google Drive is something that you're going to use a lot. Um, It's really, really helpful to have all of your stuff on a cloud-based system so that you can access it from anywhere. And if, you know, something happens to your laptop, your assignments, your homework, your care plans, your notes, they're all safe in the cloud. So I love Google Drive. It also makes it really easy to collaborate with other students on maybe a project that you're working on together, a paper that you're working on together. You can create presentations with Google Slides. Like it's really, really great. So check out Google Drive. If you have a Gmail address, you automatically get a decent amount of free storage on Google Drive. So you likely won't even have to pay anything. LastPass is something that I do believe you do have to pay for, but it is absolutely incredible. How many times do you reset passwords, go hunting for passwords? It it just got to be too much for me. It felt like every time I went to go log into something, because everything has a login, right? I would inevitably not have my password. I'd have to do a password reset. I was constantly updating my little secret password book and all of this stuff. And it just got to be absolutely cumbersome. So I got a LastPass account and now I have one password for my LastPass account. And that's really the only password that I have to remember because all of my passwords are safe inside LastPass. So that has saved me so much time. And again, in school, you're not going to have a ton of time for things like resetting passwords on the regular. So using something like LastPass, I believe there's another one called, oh, is it called 1Password? I forget. There's another one as well. So there's a couple of different options out there. Grammarly is a great app, and I believe they do have a free version that can help improve your writing instantly. It checks for grammar and spelling and punctuation. And if you do the premium version, I believe it even checks for plagiarism because, you know, what if you forgot that that phrase was straight from the article? You would definitely pay the price for that if your instructor saw that you accidentally plagiarized something. Even if it's an accident, it still counts. So Grammarly, I believe the premium version does check for that. So even without that, even with just the free version, it's so, so helpful to help improve your writing. If you are one of those people that's going paperless, I commend you. Um, Good Notes and Notability are great apps to use with your iPad so that you can write notes, download PDFs, write on them, basically organize all of your nursing school paperwork digitally. I even provide my planners for nursing students in that digital format. So if you are the type of person who wants to use a digital planner in that way, then check those out as well. Zotero is my secret weapon. I discovered it in graduate school and I had to write all these huge papers. It is a bibliography manager. It makes in-text citations. It makes your reference lists so, so easy. All of your references organized in one place. Absolutely life-changing. It makes writing papers, doing research, writing those discussion board posts and case studies and all those things that you have to provide references for so much less painful. I love, love, love Zotero. And then Skyscape, this is not free. Skyscape is a fully digital collection of the most important nursing resources. This includes Davis's Drug Guide, Nurses Clinical Pocket Guide, Skyscape Labs, and more. I did use this in nursing school, and I found that I used it a lot because I was often maybe out and about. I maybe didn't have my lab reference book. I maybe didn't have my physical drug guide, but I had the Skyscape reference, and it was really, really great to have that. Okay, and then the next list in your nursing student checklist is to start subscribing to some really good nursing podcasts. So hopefully you're listening to this one and you're subscribed to it, right? I hope you're subscribed to it. But if you're not, just click that, um, click the follow or the subscribe links so that all the episodes show up for you every week. Fresh RN by Katie Kleber is absolutely fantastic as well. Nursing School Week by Week is a nursing student just talking about their experiences as they go. I think they do update it every week. If not, it might be every other week or so, but they're pretty consistent. 
Real Talk School of Nursing. I'm not sure how active it's been lately, but there is a backlog of really good episodes there. The Nurse Blake podcast for maybe a little comedy relief. And the Nursing podcast is also a good one as well. Okay, now let's talk about technology. So the right technology tools are essential to thriving in nursing school. I'm talking about hardware here. Before I was talking about apps and software. Now we're talking about hardware. Now, budgets are obviously, for most people, very tight in nursing school. I would say the only really super essential item is a computer. Probably a laptop is going to be more helpful to you than a desktop if you had to choose one or the other. But hey, maybe somebody wants to get you something nice as a gift. Well, you can send them this list and they can choose something. So again, a computer, you absolutely need a desktop or laptop. But again, a laptop will give you more flexibility. So if you have to choose between the two, go with a laptop an iPad, tablet of some kind. This is great, again, for those who are going fully digital with apps like GoodNotes and Notability. Again, using those, you can take notes directly on your iPad and say goodbye to bulky binders and paper chaos. A printer. Now, sometimes, you know, it depends on how much you print. If you have access to a printer at school for the few times that you need to print something, then that might be enough for you. I like having a printer at home um, just because it's just so much more convenient. So getting a printer may be something that you want to look into. And then you can get one that has the, I want to say it's called Echo Tank, where it's um, the ink comes in a bottle and you pour it into the printer. Does that make sense? Is actually more economical than that whatever that other kind was where you stick the cartridge in. And some of them, I think, even come with subscriptions to ink. So you just get that sent to you automatically. So that's kind of cool. Earbuds or headphones, you're going to be watching probably a lot of online lectures, at least a lot of online modules. So drowning out distractions with earbuds or headphones is really helpful to just maintaining your focus. A smart speaker like Amazon's Echo Dot or a Google Assistant makes it really easy and really convenient to set reminders, Um, make a grocery list just on the fly, even buy items online. I use mine a lot to do quick calculations and even spell words, okay, like drug names that I, (laughs) I don't know how to spell. So I use mine all the time to set reminders, like, you know how you're getting into a project, but you also have, like, let's say you've got a class online at two o'clock or you need to leave at two o'clock to be at school at a certain time, but you're writing a paper and you know you're going to get deep into it. I always have this fear that I'm going to lose track of time, right? Because once I focus, I am super focused. So I'll say, hey, Alexa. See, I couldn't say her name too loud because she'll hear me. Alexa, set a timer for 1.55 p.m. or set a reminder for 1.55 p.m. And she'll say, what should I remind you? And I'll say, go to your class or whatever. So then I get that reminder. It pulls me out of my super focus mode. And then I'm, you know, I'm to my other appointments on time. And then a calculator A simple calculator can be utilized in clinical and on exams. So so check with your school. They may provide a calculator for exams that's just super basic, or they may tell you to bring your own. It has to be super basic with just like the most basic functions for your dosage calc exams. They don't want you doing anything fancy, and they definitely don't want you pulling out your smartphone, your iPhone, your Android phone to do your calculations because they'll probably think you're also looking up the answers. So a simple calculator. Okay, next on your new nursing student checklist is getting organized. So scheduling some time between now And when school starts to get your life, your home, organize, set up systems, and delegate as much as you can to others in your household, okay? So set up and organize your study space. Make it really conducive to learning. Prep meals for the freezer. This saved me in nursing school. There would be many, many nights where I was, you know, maybe tired from 
clinical and then having to come home and do paperwork. And it was a really long day where I would be able to pull something good out of the freezer versus spending money I didn't have on takeout or getting something, you know, cheap and awful for me, like um, a burger and fries. Okay. As much as I love a burger and fries, it's not the best thing, right? Another thing to do to get organized would be to implement a system for organizing your paperwork, you know, getting your binder set up, getting your digital file set up, get into that Google Drive that you're exploring and get your digital systems in place. As much as you can, put your life on autopilot with your bills, with the things that you buy on repeat, all of that sort of thing. Amazon subscribe and save is great. I haven't had to think about contact lens solution in years because it just shows up. I love it. I always like to give the house a really good cleaning before I started a semester of school, and that way I felt like it was okay to let some things kind of slide for a few months while I was in the thick of it, as long as I had that really good, solid base, deep cleaning to start with. And then, of course, with that comes doing all the laundry, putting it all away, and then letting go of that and knowing that you might be doing the thing where you put it in the wash, you put it in the laundry basket, and then it stays in the laundry basket until you wear it, and then you put it in the wash, and that's okay. All right? You got it. You just have to let go of perfection sometimes. Okay, the next item on the nursing student checklist is to review key topics from anatomy and physiology. So I'm not going to go and do all of what these are, but I'll tell you the broad categories. Again, the details are in that new student checklist at straightanursingstudent.com forward slash checklist, okay? But the key things to review from A&P, and I do cover a lot of these in boot camp because I do realize anatomy and physiology might have been a hot minute ago for you, right? It might have been several years. So that review is really key. So fluids, you know, fluid compartments, fluid balance, all of that very key concept. I use it all the time at the bedside. Renal system basics, okay? Electrolytes. Basically, what I'm talking about would be the role that electrolytes play in the body. Review dimensional analysis. You learned it in chemistry. Review that because it makes it absolutely foolproof to do your dosage calculations. Looking at the respiratory system, just get that general reminder of oxygenation, um, gas exchange, those very basic broad concepts. Looking at the cardiovascular system, blood pressure regulation would probably be the most important thing to review from that, and that blood flow pathway through the heart. There's some other things on the checklist, but just to tell you, those two things would be key. Acid-base balance, how the body maintains that, absolutely critical. You'll be doing this a lot in your ICU uh, clinical rotations, and in your complex or your advanced med surge class. Go in, and I know you probably don't want to do this. I wouldn't want to either, but go in and review the autonomic nervous system. This would be your alpha and beta receptors, your sympathetic versus parasympathetic. All those types of things are going to come up over and over again and is a good background for pharmacology. The RAS pathway the renin angiotensin aldosterone system pathway is really key. Make sure you know that. And look at the endocrine system. I'm not saying you have to memorize every hormone, but refamiliarize yourself with positive and negative feedback loops. Maybe also looking at, you know, some specific hormones if you wanted to dive a little deeper. Insulin, cortisol, thyroid hormones, aldosterone, antidiuretic hormone, those are probably the ones that we use the most, okay? So that is basically your checklist for nursing school. I know it sounds like a lot. Some of these things are easy. Some of them do take a little bit more time. If you want this in a downloadable format, go to straightanursingstudent.com forward slash checklist, and you can get that free download there. So again, Crucial Concepts Bootcamp, my nursing school prep course, 
is on sale right now. Use promo code CCBSUMMER22 to get 20% off and a bunch of really great free bonuses, including an electrolyte study guide and even a free med surge study guide when you choose the social share option. So I'll also link to that in the episode notes. There's a ton of information about it online, a ton of testimonials to review and see what other students thought. And you can always reach out to me if you have any questions. I hope to see you there and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. This podcast is brought to you by Straight A Nursing. 